going on my fellow reef builders? I am Jake Adams. Welcome back to the Reef Builder Studio for what I hope will be a very informative video about calcium reactors. Now, whether you've used calcium reactors for a long time or you've never used one before, I have 10 different tips and tricks and things to know in general about calcium reactors that I hope will enrich the experience of using and owning one on your reef aquarium. So this video is brought to us by Seachem and their brand new Aqua Vitro line of uh, various media reactors. So there's three media reactors in the line. We've got the calcium reactor, which is not on the table right now because it's in use. So we're going to go over there and check it out here in a little bit. Um, but we also have the element uh, M, media reactor, and the element Z, zeolite reactor. So the Element M media reactor, uh, just like all the reactors, has kind of a primary chamber and a cartridge inside that um, is easily removable for servicing, cleaning, and for refilling. Um, each of the reactors comes with a pump that is suited for that particular size of reactor. Uh, the media reactor itself is really interesting because it includes kind of like a bypass valve right here. So if you want high flow uh, going through your activated car carbon or your aluminum oxide phosgard. Um, in this chamber you can see I have both of those, but if you want to use it for like bio pellets or something, you can actually open this valve and basically bypass some of the water so you have a little bit of a slower gentle tumble of your bio pellets. And over here we have the Element Z zeolite reactor, which has two different pumps. I've got it fit with, filled with the uh, zeolite media as well. And so this is kind of a really interesting design because each of these pumps has a kind of a, like a small floating ball inside. So when the water tries to backflow, it's going to stop it from doing that. So we have the primary pump, which is going to circulate water through the entire chamber and it overflows here into this uh, nice little filter sock. But then there's also a secondary pump that you put on a timer that will pull in air and it's not like a protein skimmer It's going to make really large bubbles that is going to agitate the zeolite media and dislodge um, that bacterial film that is used for ultra low nutrient systems. So the first thing I want you guys to know about a calcium reactor is if you've never used one, um, it can be really overwhelming. There's a lot of tubes and doodads and calcium reactors can get really technical. And so it can be kind of a daunting thing. But once you set one up and you assemble some of the different components yourself, um, you realize it's not that complicated. And in the long run, it can really help to manage the mineral balance uh, within your aquarium. Um, the second thing is, you know, dosers and Kalkwasser reactors have gotten really good at doing some things for maintaining calcium and alkalinity within a reef tank. So you might be wondering, why a calcium reactor? And so calcium reactor is really going to be useful the most when you really have very high demands for calcium and alkalinity in a reef tank with a lot of stony corals. So having a calcium reactor in your tank is very much like proof control. Once they're set up properly, um, they're pretty much set it and forget it and they're really going to help to even out your calcium and alkaline levels on your aquarium. And um, one thing that's a, a little bit confusing, number three, is that a calcium reactor is more of a pump for buffer, for carbonates, increasing the alkalinity within your aquarium. So it's called a calcium reactor, but in a parallel universe, it might as well be called a alkalinity reactor. All right, now that we've got these few primer details about calcium reactors out of the way, let's go over to an aquarium and see how I've set up the Element CA calcium reactor from Aqua Vitro. To my right, you can see all of the equipment that I have on this specific aquarium and my particular setup for the Aqua Vitro Element C8 calcium reactor. Like I said in my first tip, there's a lot of bells and whistles and things added to it, but once I walk you through it, I think it's going to make a lot more sense. Here you can see how I've set up the Aqua Vitro Element CA 
calcium reactor. So this is the impulse pump that drives the entire thing. It pulls from the bottom and it blows into this primary chamber right here and acts as a mixing chamber for the gas. And that swirls around until it reaches the top and flows downwards through the media. In this particular setup, I'm using the coarse uh, reactor media. And like I said, that flows down and then back into the pump. And right here, you can see two inlets. I'm using one for water and one for gas. So here is my CO2 tank with a bubble counter in plain sight so I can keep a close eye on the bubble rate. That's going into a solenoid valve that I'm currently uh, have completely open. And so that goes right into the pump. And then I am using a dosing pump on continuous dosing mode to deliver one milliliters of water to the calcium reactor so I have a very constant rate of effluent, and there's a variety of options for where you want your water to come out. I've selected to have it come out the top, and that goes into a, just basically like a little cup that I can use for a little bit of degassing, but also for testing the carbon dioxide, testing the CO2 levels, and the alkalinity of the effluent from this calcium reactor. So the next thing I want to tell you about is calcium reactor media. Um, in the early days of calcium reactors, we pretty much used what would be considered something very fine, something akin to a coarse sand in order to pack as much media into the reactor as possible with a very high surface area. But over time, as that coarse sand breaks down, it does create kind of a silt and a sludge that tends to clog up your calcium reactor. So most users have gravitated towards using something a little bit more coarse. Uh, CCAM offers uh, calcium reactor media in two different grades. So we have the medium grade right here, which is gonna allow you to pack a little bit more media into your calcium reactor chamber. Um, it's gonna give you a little bit more surface area. So you're gonna be able to get a little bit more of that dissolution rate, but as it breaks down, the silt is going to clog up the rest of the media. And for that reason, some users have gravitated towards using a little bit coarser media. That's gonna give you a lot better flow. You're not gonna have as much punch in the chamber because you can't fit nearly as much uh, surface area for dissolution with a larger media that you can with a medium sized media, but that's really going to be up to the user on what they prefer. Okay, so the next thing I want you guys to know about calcium reactors is that you don't have to have a pH controller on your calcium reactor. It is by far the easiest way to put cruise control on your calcium reactor, but you don't have to do this. We use calcium reactors without any kind of pH control for many years before we had access to a good affordable pH controllers. And the way you do this is you test the effluent coming out of a calcium reactor. Now, generally you wanna range between 6.5 and 6.7 as far as pH so you can make sure that it's acidic enough that it's dissolving the media inside your calcium reactor. I tend to aim for around 6.7 because I don't want too much acidic water and carbon dioxide going into the aquarium and lowering my pH and you also want to keep an eye on alkalinity just to make sure that it's providing the minerals that you want for your aquarium. It's really easy to look at a calcium reactor and see that it's half full or two thirds full of media. But if it's been running for a long time, this media will have already kind of broken down and the little bits of silt will have clogged and is going to impede the flow through your calcium reactor. So you need to service your calcium reactor way, way, way before it's empty. In general, I like to keep mine way more than half full, but if it's been a little while, I will definitely take out all the media, rinse it down, and then give it a little bit of top off to make sure have as much media and surface area uh, active and present in order to dissolve it within the calcium reactor. If you've never set up a calcium reactor before, you might be wondering where's a good place to start, especially if you're not using a pH controller like me. So a good advice is to start with one bubble per second and one ml per minute. And the way you measure that is probably count out around, you know, 20 to 30 bubbles over 20 to 30 seconds. It doesn't have to be exact. And then for the effluent rate, maybe count out around 20 drops per minute because 20 drops is equal to one ml. So that's a good starting baseline. and that's 
what I'm using here on this particular setup. Now, if you need a little bit more, just increase your effluent rate, either by opening up a control valve or increasing the volume on your dosing pump, but you'll also have to increase your bubble rate as required to keep the effluent pH at 6.7 or lower. Okay, so the next thing to know about a calcium reactor, and this is a really important point, is that using a calcium reactor is going to lower your pH. So it's going to give your aquarium water the calcium and buffer that it needs, but by dropping the pH, it's going to reduce the calcification rate of your aquarium corals and coralline algae. Therefore, it is really paramount to manage the CO2 in the water that's coming out of your calcium reactor. Now, there's a couple ways that you could do this. Um, the classic way is to have a secondary chamber filled with fine media that's going to have that high surface area and that is going to help uh, buffer the water that's coming out of your calcium reactor. Another thing you can do is have the effluent from your calcium reactor going into your protein skimmer so that the air water mixture is going to help to degas that carbon dioxide and uh, you know if you want to take it all the way go ahead and run a secondary chamber of fine media and then have that going into your protein skimmer um, but one of the most effective things for me is actually having a second chamber with just a simple air stone i find that having that air stone helps to degas that carbon dioxide without the risk of having lime deposits uh, building up on your protein skimmer pump so make sure that you manage the effluent from your calcium reactor um, so that it doesn't drop your pH in your aquarium water too much. Okay, so the next thing, the next tip I want to share with you about calcium reactors is that most calcium reactor designs um, are, have a feature that allows them to supply their own feed water so you don't need, per se, a secondary dosing pump. But even the best gang valve or needle valve at the very end of the line is going to build up some kind of uh, calcifying deposits and grits from the breakdown of the rock and the stones that we're trying to dissolve. So for that reason, is probably a lot more dependable and reliable to use a dedicated dosing pump to deliver a precise amount of feed water to your calcium reactor. But along the same lines, in order to keep your dosing pump as accurate as possible, make sure to use some kind of fine pre-filter um, so you don't get any of tank crud going into your dosing pump. The last thing to know about a calcium reactor is really some good sound advice about everything pertaining to your reef aquarium. A calcium reactor can really put your calcium and alkalinity demands on cruise control, but you want to carefully observe the operation of your calcium reactor. Make sure the water is flowing through it as it's supposed to. Make sure that your effluent is coming out at the rate that you've set it at. Make sure your bubble counter is dispensing CO2 and make sure that your tank actually has carbon dioxide side in it. So this is really going to help you uh, catch your calcium reactor before anything goes wrong because you don't want to experience any uh, sudden swings in calcium and alkalinity that's going to interrupt the growth of your corals. Like I said, this is really just sound advice for everything about your aquariums. Just give it a glance once a week or so to make sure everything is uh, operating as nominal. So thanks for joining me on this video about 10 things to know about a calcium reactor. Whether you've never used a calcium reactor before or you've been been using in one for years. I hope you have found some useful information in this video. Really want to thank Seachem for sponsoring this segment to bring to you guys. If you have any questions about calcium reactors, now's a great time to pop those down in the comments below where we are very active at responding to specific questions. So make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't ever miss another video from the Reef Builder Studio and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Later guys.